Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the 60th anniversary for the Thanksgiving service the uh, Christian Socialist Movement and Christians on the Left. I'm Janet Davey, I'm an MP for Lewisham uh, East, uh, and also a member of Christians on the Left and the Shadow Minister for Faith. It's my delight to be hosting uh, this fantastic event this evening and welcoming you, you to that. So it's great to see you. But before we begin, just some house rules for you really, which we all love house rules. Um, so just to say that there is there is a hashtag and there is a, a Twitter name as well and that's going to be put in the uh, chat box for you so that you can uh, uh, tweet out and uh, and make others know about this event. Um, it is also going to be recorded and going to be placed on YouTube at a later date. I'm sure it'll be very soon actually. Um, but if you don't want to be seen, then please do obviously um, take your, your, your picture off and you've got a choice of, uh, of a name or not having the name up there as well. So it's lovely to see faces that I recognize and faces that are familiar to me and not so familiar and lovely new faces as well. So you're all warmly uh, welcomed. Um, we were thinking about the idea of having a, a photograph that you know, where people can take pictures, but we think we'll leave that to the end just so that people can feel relaxed and comfortable. And uh, at the end, we'll let you know when you can uh, take a, a photograph of um, uh, you know, a screenshot of uh, of everybody on on this uh, on this event this evening. So tonight it's about remembering God's goodness over the years, the sixty years of being an organisation affiliated to the Labour Party, and that is great news, which I'm sure you'll all agree. Uh, but before we uh, go any further, we're going to open in prayer. I can hear an echo, but I hope that will go soon. But we're going to open in prayer by Jeanette Arnold, the London Assembly member. So over to you, Jeanette. Thank you, Janet. God of yesterday, today and tomorrow, we focus our attention on you now, here in your presence. Open our ears that we may hear your word. Open our minds that we may understand your word. Open our hearts that we may receive your word. Inspire us with the gospel message that we may celebrate all that is life-giving, restore hope where it has been lost and bring work to bring about change where it's needed. Thank you for your constant provision your guiding hand, your wisdom in all things, your mercy that never ends, your love that never fails. Let us be ever mindful of your goodness at all times. May we live the gospel with courage, constancy and love. May we be open to the challenge of your call to true freedom. May we be faithful to you in our daily choices and decisions. May we make your love known through our words and actions. May the triune God reign in our hearts, now and forever. Amen. Amen. That is beautiful, Jeanette. Thank you very much. Now, in our usual crew, Christian fashion we're going to have some praise and worship and uh, for me uh, praise and worship brings me strength and it brings a, a deep joy joy to my heart and I'm sure it does to many of you as well in Nehemiah 8:10, it tells us the joy of the Lord is our strength so even though we are not able to to uh, listen to each other's voices please do sing along because we're going to be led in some worship by the singer and songwriter songwriter Neil uh, Robinson. Welcome. The first song we're going to sing is a song called Blessed Assurance. Welcome. The first song we're going to sing is a song called Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, a well known hymn. 
that we can all join in. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Here's our salvation, purchased of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect delight. Visions of wrath. Now burst on my side Angels descending Bring from above Echoes of mercy Whispers of love This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior all the day long this is my story this is my song praising my savior all the day long perfect submission all is at rest i am my savior and happy and blessed Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. I say all the day long. Say, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. with me but it's a prayer song it's a song we call it a civic hymn it's called we seek your kingdom
for all things in him all things were made inspiring culture media and trade Noel that was absolutely beautiful I'm sure everybody's agreeing I hope everybody was able to sing along to that as well and I realized that the second song you co-wrote with Andy Flanagan and Reverend Graham who are also on the call so well done that was really beautiful and uh, really meaningful words there um let me just have a little bit of audience participation, if that's all right. Wave at me if you've done this type of Zoom worship most recently. Just wave. Well, I know it's something we are doing at the moment. But, you know, worship is all about the heart. So it doesn't matter where and when and how, but it's all about uh, all about the heart. So I'm going to hand you over now to the chair of Christians on the left which is uh, my dear friend and colleague, uh, MP Jonathan Reynolds, who's also the Shadow Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. Over to you, Jonathan. Well, thank you, Janet, and, and a warm welcome to everyone who's just come in to the meeting. And apologies for that technology uh, or that you thought you weren't going to get in, but it's all prevailed and it's all good news. Um, listen, a very warm welcome from me to tonight's 60th birthday celebration. Uh, I'm always proud to be able to tell people I'm the chair of Christians on the left, but what a privilege it is to be able to do so during our 60th year. I believe what we do as an organization is important, and I believe how we do it is important. 
In this era of populism, divisiveness and discord, I think the role that we play as Christians on the left has never been more important. And I'd like to start by thanking two people who are integral to our work. They are, of course, our director, Louise Davis, and our office and comms manager, Daniel May Miller, who have put tonight's celebration together and who really do work incredibly hard all year round. Lou and Daniel, it is an incredible blessing to know and work alongside both of you. Now, a guaranteed way to get any Labour Party meeting really going is to get into a debate about what socialism really means. And a debate on Christian socialism would be no different. Well, let me just say, next to my desk in Portcullis House, I keep a passage from the Bible that all of you will be familiar with, I'm sure. It's Matthew 7, verses 9 to 12. It's the passage that ends, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. It's something so familiar, we can forget just how revolutionary a concept that really is. But for me, the strong society that we all want does mean having the same regard for your fellow citizens as if they were yourself and your own family. I remember the first time I ever heard of Barack Obama. It was when he was just then a state senator in Illinois, and he gave the speech that made his name at the 2004 Democratic Convention. And there's a section of that speech that I really love, and you might know it too. It's when he said, if there's a child on the south side of Chicago who can't read, that matters to me, even if it's not my child. If there's a senior citizen somewhere who can't pay for a prescription and has to choose between medicine and the rent. That makes my life poorer, even if it's not my grandmother. And then he went on to say, if there's an Arab American family being rounded up without benefit of an attorney or due process, that's a threat to my civil liberties. They're wonderful words. And in the context of what has come after him, I think especially poignant words too. Because really, those words are the second commandment in action. Love thy neighbour as thyself. And for all of us who've chosen to try and make a difference through politics and through the political system, I know it's not easy at times. Believe me, there are times when even as a member of the Shadow Cabinet, when uh, I wish I could just go out and say whatever I want without the constraints and disciplines that has to come with a position like mine. But unless all of us choose to work together, we remain at least in part selfish. It's always easier to go alone. It's much more difficult to choose to collaborate. But all of us here tonight, whether that's inside or outside of Westminster, whether it's part of a charity or working for an NGO, being a local councillor or, or being a member of Christians on the left, we have chosen this way to walk the more difficult path of collaboration, compromise, failure and success together. In Christians on the left, we always say we're a broad church within a broad church. We're old, young, richer, poorer, tea drinkers and coffee addicts, Marmite lovers and haters, leavers and remainers but we're all Christians and we're all on the left. And our strength is that we are united in that common cause, not divided by those differences. And I would just like to take the time to thank some of those who've gone before us, making the way, preparing the ground and carrying the torch of Christian socialism. I wanna particularly thank my predecessor as chair, Stephen Timms MP, who was someone I believe absolutely embodies the integrity and decency of what we are about. And our former director, Andy Flanagan, whom, I have to thank for approaching me after one of our annual services at the beginning of a Labour Party conference and getting me involved in this great movement. I think there's probably a few people on this call tonight who can say that of Andy. It's also fantastic to have with us tonight former executive committee members and long-standing members of the Christian Socialist Movement, now Christians on the left, and some who could not be here. I want to particularly recognise our former chairs, Alan Michael, formerly Member of Parliament, now Police Commissioner for South Wales, Bev Thomas, Reverend David Haslam, Chris Bryant, and Peter Dorr. I want to recognize our former directors, Dr. Andrew Bradstock and Graham Dale, and our former executive committee members, Rachel Maskell MP, Helen Dennis, Curran Cross, David Hallam, David Hadley, and Chris Ostrowski. And last but not least, our former office managers, Rebecca Henney, Melanie Stride, and Kat Smith MP. I'd also like to thank all the executive committee and regional representatives of recent years, many of us who are here with us tonight, but there's just too many to list individually. But without these faithful servants and many more, we could not have been able to do so much over the last five years. With our successful campaigns like Patriots Pay Tax and Love Your CLP, which have brought witness to the Labour Party, as well as resources such as the Truth to Power videos and, of course, our renowned mentoring programme. It really is exciting to see a new generation of Christians joining the movement, standing on the shoulders of those 
who've gone before us. Tonight, we hear from just a handful of members involved with the movement, but this service is to give thanks for the thousands of members making a difference, whether that's yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For these last 60 years of Christians serving on the left in politics, we give thanks to every one of you. Now for tonight, we asked some of those members to give us 60 words or 60 seconds on why they are a Christian on the left. And we've had some truly fantastic responses. We'll share more of these in the coming weeks, but for now, I'm very pleased to introduce our member, Ned McDonald, to give us his 60 seconds for 60 years. Over to you, Nen. Thanks, Jonathan. I'm a Christian on the left because the teachings of the gospel are the base shock of my politics. Jesus teaches us to take care of the poor, the vulnerable, the injured and the sick. And also because that commandment really speaks to me, love thy neighbour. It's offered without any exception. It doesn't say love your neighbour except this person. It tells us to love universally. But also I'm a Christian on the left because it speaks to my values and my principles. And also, finally, the reason I joined Christians on the left was because I got a wee bit sick and tired of the right wing commandeering my faith and twit to make an excuse for some of their heartless policies. When I know my teachings and the teachings of the gospel tell us to be kind and to be caring, not cruel and callous. And that's why I'm a Christian on the left. Thank you very much, uh, Nan. That was uh, that was lovely. And well done for doing that in 60, <laughs> in 60 uh, seconds as well. I'm now going to um, uh, hand you over to a time of prayer with my friend and the former chair of Christians on the left, the Right Honourable Stephen Timms. Over to you, Stephen. Remember to unmute, Stephen. Thank you, Janet. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for 60 years since the establishment of the Christian Socialist Movement and for all that you've done in and through us in that time. We give thanks for the generations of faithful Christian Socialists who've gone before us for the time and energy they've given to our cause. We thank you for all those who've served as MPs, officers, executive members and volunteers over the years for their humble obedience to God's calling and their contribution to our movement. Lord, in your Lord, mercy, mercy, hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. In this time of crisis, we pray that as Christians in politics, we might all be salt and light in whatever way required. We pray especially for those of our members who you have called to positions of responsibility in parliament and local government, that they would have wisdom in the decisions that are asked of them as they seek the good of their communities. We pray too for our friends in other parties and especially those in government, that they might pursue godly integrity and justice in their leadership of the nation through the pandemic and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. God of hope, as we look ahead to the future. We pray that you would continue to bless and inspire us to seek your will in the world of politics. We ask for your strength and guidance as we commit to the task of building your kingdom both within and outside party lines. We pray that you would stir us to dream bigger dreams and work for a vision of the world as you intended it to be, even when that seems impossible. We pray that we might know your presence with us, encouraging us and loving us in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. That was lovely. Christians on the left has been affiliated to our Labour Party since 1988 maybe one of the oldest uh, one of the oldest uh, affiliates to the party and I know there was this little conversation earlier that was going on about that uh, that nobody else heard but um, there were a few conversations so that is uh, something to be very pleased and uh, indeed uh, proud about and although the leader of the uh, of our Labour Party Keir Starmer did want to join us unfortunately he was unable to but he sends his best wishes, his well wishes, and he's done a short video for us, which we will 
uh, play now. Good evening, Christians on the left, and happy 60th anniversary. Although sadly I can't join you personally tonight, I'm really glad that you have Janet Davey, our Shadow Minister for Faiths, and a great friend to Christians on the left as your host for this evening. The Christian Socialist Movement was born 60 years ago, but Christian Socialism stretches way back beyond that and has had a place within our movement since its very beginning. The Christian community has always been at the forefront of social activism, seeking justice and speaking truth to power. I've seen Christians active in their local food banks, homeless shelters and many other projects. As part of our movement, Christians on the left continue to be a campaigning force in their local communities and nationally on issues such as tax evasion and food poverty. Within our party, you've set a great example of the culture we need if we're to unite our membership and form the next Labour government. It is this commitment to local activism, national campaigning and our party culture that's made such a valuable contribution to our society and to the Labour Party. I would like to thank all members of the Christian Socialist Movement and Christians on the left for your dedication over the past 60 years. You have a great leadership team in Louise as your director and Johnny as your chair. I want to thank them and the team for all of their hard work and support. In these uncertain times, we need the hope that you bring more than ever. I look forward to working with you more as we work in our constituencies and with our neighbours to build a better society. Thank you again for all that you do. Excellent, that was lovely. Next person I'm going to uh, hand you over to is a good friend, uh, Andy uh, Flanagan, that most of you will probably know uh, on this uh, on on this uh, 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 virtual uh, event. And I remember when I, I first met Andy, it was it was way before I was a, a, a member of Parliament, and I remember how encouraging and how inspiring he was then, and he hasn't changed. And it gives me real pleasure to introduce you, Andy. Over to you. Oh. Bless you, Janet. You're, you're very, very kind. Evening, folks. What a privilege to do this. And what a privilege uh, to have, for the first time in my life, uh, Sir Keir Stormer as my uh, support act, which is just great to know. And, I, you know, do look out for his latest album, it's ready to download, just a minute. It's called PMQs. Uh, really worth a listen, worth a listen. Um, it, is, it is wonderful to be with you. And I, I wanted to actually, I thought this was such a special event, I wanted to actually write a song specifically for this evening. So this is a song I've written specifically for this evening. And, um, and I thought, yes, 60 years, but actually the story goes a lot further back than that. And, and so I wanted to give witness and testimony to some of the other names that, are, that go even further back than that. Um, and uh, listen out and see how many you can spot. And Sabbath screams that life is more than profit. Whispers, racism is real. And David learns it's mad to count your armies. And Joseph first declared there's a new deal. So Jonah sees the truth about nationalism and Eve and Adam show we took a fall and Jacob gives a nod to voter suppression and Amos he repeats that wealth's for all chose the weakest nation you chose a teenage girl and you chose the low-wage workers and you flipped this fallen 
world. You are the God of the underdog. You are the Lord of the least and lost. And flow through our hearts and through our laws. You're the king of a kingdom which is come to birth. We're the first, our last, and the last, our first death. Hey. So Peter learns to be less xenophobic. And Moses sees that violence doesn't pay. The Pharisees reflect on their white privilege. But Sarah sees that laughter wins the day. Now Gideon has faith in more than numbers. And Jubilee says power trickles up. And Ruth reveals compassion conquers safety. Then Jesus takes a knee and takes the cup. Chose the shunned and sinful, and you chose the departy, and you chose the Luton of Israel. You choose people just like me. You are the God of the underdog. You are the Lord of the least and lost. So flow through our hearts and through our laws. You're the king of a kingdom that has come to birth. We're the first, our last, and the last, our first hand. Last, our first hand. So Noah says that telling people that unimaginable and uncomfortably terrible things are approaching is a crucial part of being a leader even if they might hurt your re-election yeah don't you know we're talking about a revolution sounds like like a whisper don't you know Talking about a revolution Sounds like, like a whisper Cause poor people gonna rise up And take their shit Poor people gonna rise up And take what's there Poor people gonna rise up And take their shit Poor people gonna rise up Yeah Don't you know Talking about a revolution sounds like, like a whisper. Yeah. Don't you know, 60 years talking about a revolution, it sounds like, like a whisper. Yeah. Starts with a mustard seed, becomes the biggest tree. Starts with an act of patience, turns into legislation. Starts with a single tweet. Turns into marching feet, starts with a foot, foot by kind, spreads throughout the land. Cause you are the God of the underdog, you are the Lord of the least and lost. So flow through our hearts and through our laws. You're the king of a kingdom that has come to birth. We're the first, our last, and the last, our first. Thank you, Andy. That was lovely. It was the, I think I'm safe to say that was very radical, uh, Andy. We're all supposed to be radical anyway, but that was absolutely, that was, that was lovely. And, uh, 
very uh, on point uh, through that. I, it was a, it was a, it was a preach as, as well as a, a sermon as, as well as a, a, a speech. It was fantastic. Thank you, thank you, Wendy, for that. Um, I'm going to hand you over now to again a good friend of mine, uh, Rachel Maskills, the uh, MP for York Central, and I'm going to give you a chance to find your Bibles if you have them, or to pick up your phones. And she's going to be reading from. Uh, Matthew chapter 22 verses 15 to 22 and I'm sure she'll repeat that to you again. Over to you Rachel. Thank you Janet. Yes I'll be reading from Matthew 22 15 to 22 the question about paying taxes. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying teacher we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed and they left him and went away. Thank you, Rachel. It's my privilege to introduce you to tonight's speaker, the Bishop of Salisbury and member of the Lord's Spiritual, the Right Reverend Nick Halton. Thanks ever so much, Janet, and thank you very much for the invitation to be here. May I speak and may you hear in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So the start of that reading was, um, then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. Um, Christianity and politics is a minefield. We've seen that several times this week. Um, I'm really glad to be here. Thanks very much for the invitation. Um, St Matthew's story of the tribute money is one that has been used to explore the relationship of Christianity and politics, and it's wonderfully enigmatic, presumably deliberately so. You can hear it, you can read it either way. For some, the point of the story is about what we rightfully give to the state pay your taxes, be good citizens, support the powers that be. In an age of persecution, that would have helped Christians survive as they'd not have been seen as a threat to the state. And a more positive version was developed by St Paul, that those in authority are placed there by God. They too have a vocation. The business of government is demanding. We should pray for our politicians and leaders and we will pay our dues. But Jesus' story of the tribute money also seems to have satisfied the religious leadership who were out to trap Jesus. There's a clear distinction between what Luther saw as the two realms. In this earthly kingdom, we must do our civic duty, but our primary allegiance is to God's eternal kingdom. That gives us spiritual and moral purpose, which is sometimes at odds with political authority and can mean my conscience tells me to disobey the state out of duty. There have only been a few examples where this has become clear to nearly all Christians as it was for the confessing church in Nazi Germany uh, and for most Christians in the later years of apartheid in South Africa. In those cases, what the state was doing was not compatible with Christianity because what was happening was counter to the kingdom of God. But that degree of clarity is not often given to us. In finding what God is saying to us in a time of great change, prophets are awkward, uncomfortable people who keep our critical imaginations alive about matters of conscience and there being other possible worlds over matters which ought to be controversial, but on which the state has a fixed position. 
in the Hebrew scriptures, there are really only two tests of prophecy. Is it consistent with what God has said before? And does it become true? So the question is, how does change happen? And something become true or not? There have been some sobering examples in Christian history. One of my predecessors as Bishop of Salisbury, Bishop Burgess, had previously published a book in 1788 on the abolition of slavery, advocating gradual emancipation. It's really hard for us to reconstruct what he was up against. But until about then, most Christians thought that slavery was part of God's given order of creation and supported by scripture. There's a memorial in one of the churches in this diocese at St. Peter's Dorchester for someone called John Gordon, who died in October 1774. The memorial says Gordon had resided in Jamaica for many years in universal esteem. He owned a plantation and was a slave owner. The inscription continues, he was signally instrumental in quelling a dangerous rebellion by a large body of Negroes whom his bravery had repulsed, finally yielding to their confidence in his humanity. We know that between four and 500 slaves were killed and they can't be numbered accurately. The inscription concludes, this memorial is erected as a mark of affection to the memory of the best of brothers. How did we move from that being thought to be appropriately Christian to it being so offensive now that no one can think it right and few defend such a memorial having a place in a church, though it might still be of educational interest in a museum? What's at stake here is the account we give of what it is to be human. Tertullian in the second century said that a Jew at the time of Jesus could not hear the story of the tribute money and Jesus's question about whose image is on the coin without also hearing a second unspoken question. And you, whose image is on you? We are called to live as people made in God's image and to treat other people like that too. And Jonathan just said it, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's the golden rule, not just of Christianity. Confucius said the same. In the West, we've grown used to the individualism symbolized by Descartes, I think, therefore I am. We live in an age defined by our consumption, I shop, therefore I am. But in Africa, it is, I belong, therefore I am. Desmond Tutu taught us about South African Ubuntu, that a person is a person through a person. Isn't that the insight of Christian socialism, that we're in this life together? St Paul's account of the church as the body of Christ, enlivening and transfiguring society. It's in worship that we find our proper place with God, with one another and all creation. It's not all about me. In an age of narcissism, that's an incredibly valuable insight about our human identity and purpose. One of the reasons Christianity is a great missionary religion is because of the in, in because of the incarnation, Christianity has been able to take root in every time and every place. Actually, that also means that there are Christians of every political hue, not just of the left. I, I think I genuinely used to find that difficult, uh, but I don't anymore. And I find myself the bishop of a diocese where I've only got conservative MPs and some of them are really good, just like some of any party are really good. The health of society depends on the quality of engagement across the political divides. The conventions of parliament are meant to help the broad political discourse, but in a time of pandemic, 
a commitment to disruption is not serving the political body well. In this time, Christians with a deeper unity than their political tribe must be working hard in the shared faith space for the common good. When the Christian movement, the Christian socialist movement was founded, there was a post-war consensus about a shared commitment to employment, good housing, the national health service, education and welfare. Now other divisions have opened up, but a government which fails to deliver on those key areas is unlikely to be re-elected. Even a diminished Christian church still has a very significant part to play because across a deeply divided United Kingdom, we are an organized Christian presence in every community. And we're global, the largest religious faith in the world. We have the potential for relationships that transcend local and global politics and which contribute to the common good. Of course, this is not primarily of political or economic value, but given that we live in an age when value is measured mostly in financial terms, it was really interesting last weekend to see the National Church Trust's The House of Good report, which put a financial value on the church's contribution to the social good in the United mm -hmm. Kingdom at over £12 billion. Pounds. The Christian contribution to beliefs and values is about our identity as human beings made in the image of God. Our values are not unique to Christianity, but they are the best of what it means to be fully human in the way of Jesus Christ, with a commitment to goodness as seen in the kingdom of God through truth, justice, peace, mercy, forgiveness, love. And it might be difficult to say exactly what these mean in policy terms in this earthly realm, but they are about, they are what we are about. And attempts to disrupt them need calling out. Our circumstances are changing dramatically. There are big shifts in global politics. We've woken up to the scale of the climate and ecological emergency, which requires collective action and new world thinking. We're faced with a pandemic and the consequent damage to the economy and established ways of living. I was ever so struck by Pope Francis speaking uh, just under a month ago uh, when he took the two related themes of the pandemic and the environment. And he said, to emerge from a pandemic, we need to look after and care for each other, especially the poor and most vulnerable. I think I want to add to that, that we need to be looking after the young because the intergenerational issues of fairness were present before the pandemic, but look even more pressing now. So we need to care for each other. And then Pope Francis went on to say that we must extend this care to our, to our common home. Isn't it brilliant the way he used that ecology, economy, ecumenism, the one room, the laws of the house, the wisdom, by which the diversity of the earth is cared for. We need to extend this care to our common home, he said, to the earth and to every creature. He said that the best antidote against, antidote against the misuse of our common home is contemplation. He said, if someone has not learned to stop and admire something beautiful, we should not be surprised if he or she treats everything as an object to be used and abused without scruple. In order to discover the true value of creation, Pope Francis said we need to be silent. We need to listen. And we need to contemplate. Contemplating and caring. These are the two attitudes that show the way to correct and rebalance our relationship as human beings with creation. I think that's a fantastic insight. It's really worth holding on to. Contemplation and caring. Contemplation and the love of neighbour, defined broadly as scripture does, are where Christians can make a difference. 
anniversaries are for looking back and giving thanks, but they're also about rediscovering purpose and looking forward. Because of the pandemic, the age of individualism is over. Christian socialism is well placed to make a substantial contribution with what happens next for the common good. In that marvellously simple prayer of Dag Hammarskjöld's, on this 60th anniversary of the Christian socialist movement, for all that has been, thanks. To all that will be, yes. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Bishop Nick. Thank you for your challenging uh, and encouraging words. I'm going to hand over now to our final song for the evening by Noel Robinson. So sing along, everybody, and join in. The last song we're going to sing for you today is a simple song that just speaks about rain and rain is symbolic of the blessings of God falling from heaven and how we need the hand of God to move on our nation so we declare this and we say should rain rain on me Revival rain. I hear the 
So we say rain, rain on me, open the windows of heaven, oh yes you are Lord, open up the windows of heaven, amen, amen, amen. Yay, wonderful. I love that song. Love it. Absolutely fantastic. Now, everybody, it's actually my mum's birthday today, but I did see her earlier. So I'm just going to say happy birthday, mum. And the reason I'm saying that is because there's a, another lady's birthday, a lady called Jean Hall. She can't be with us this evening, but it is her 90th birthday and she is part of Christians on the Left. And I'm going to hand over to our fabulous Louise, who's going to read out a, a 60 to 60 from her. Thank you, Janet. This is what Jean writes. A life spent living the faith, praying for the poor, the vulnerable, but knowing that it needs active help on the ground. The Labour Party is the only choice around. CLP chair, secretary, woman's officer, but uh, councillor, mayor, school gov, women's refuge, homeless, need I go on? Retired now, but still a passionate 89 year old. I intend never to leave either fold. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Thank you. Listen, it's been a wonderful evening, everybody. And I just want to thank you again, everybody for attending, all of our wonderful speakers, people that prayed, everybody that contributed to making uh, this session, this event, fantastic. And a special thanks again to uh, Bishop Nick, Noel, and to people behind the scenes, our Louise and Daniel and so many others. Thank you everybody for that. That's absolutely great. And just to let you know that we will feature um, the 60 word for 60 years um, on the website and on the newsletter that will be coming out soon. Uh, we are going to have a closing prayer by Ruth Jones and then I'm going to tell you a little bit more. Now Ruth is a dear friend of mine. We both came in on the by-election. I got there before you Ruth and then you followed me but and uh, we, we share a very close relationship because we really did come at a similar time. And I remember us cracking a joke in a queue about all different Bibles. I was thinking, oh, Ruth must be a Christian. And she absolutely is. <laughs> Over to you, Ruth. <laughs> Thank you, Janet, so much. Shall we pray? Grant us, Lord God, a vision of your world as your love would have it. A world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor. A world where the riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them. A world where different races and cultures live in harmony and mutual respect. A world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love. Give us the inspiration and courage to build it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So thank you again everybody for joining us and I look forward to seeing you again at our next event, Build Back Better. How can Labour work towards post-COVID global solidarity? Solidarity. This will be on Thursday, the 5th of November. We'll be joined by World Vision, Christian Aid, Tear Fund, and Preet Jill, an MP and the Shadow Secretary for International Development. Take care, everybody, and good night. See you soon. <laughs>